So I'm back again with uh, Fiona McGlynn, and we're going to be discussing the sun for a Libra ascendant. And what we're going to be considering here is the fact that the sun rules the 11th house for a Libra ascendant, that the sun is exalted. Um, the sun is exalted in the seventh house for a Libra ascendant, and the sun is debilitated in the first. Okay, and after I said all that, I said it right, right? <laughs> That's I, right. You got all okay. of those in the okay. right. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is what we're going to be doing to see, you know, how should the sun work ideally for a Libra Ascendant? So welcome back, Fiona. And um, let's start with this idea of what we know about the sun and its general qualities and what it stands for and the fact that it rules the 11th house. What does that tell us about how these solar qualities are meant to express through a Libra ascendant? Thanks, Ryan. I think uh, some of the things that come to mind straight away is that the sun in the 11th house, this has got this idea of consistency, which we like from the sun in this growing house of gains. So we you know, there's this good feeling on paper uh, that over time the sun is going to lead the Libra to um, enjoy gains uh, as their life goes on. Um, and uh, only ruling one house here and just being in charge of that, the sun just being in charge of that, you know, that's not too bad in the luck of the draw of all of these uh, different ascendants and where your planet's going to end up. So, yes, it's a good start. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that we find with the fact that the sun rules the 11th is this idea, exactly what you said, that Libra ascendants tend to have, generally speaking, um, consistent gains in their life. Now, it requires that the Libra ascendant has uh, integrity. It requires that the Libra ascendant stays uh, true to their goals. Again, these are um, solar related things. But it also, for Libra Senate, since the sun rules the 11th house, um, the 11th house is the house that requires, like the sun, a type of sacrifice. Or, in a sense, you have to jump through certain hoops to actually make something happen. So, since the sun rules gains, it shows that it may be that for a Libra Ascendant, they have to get that, um, that diploma for higher education. They have to get that certificate. They have to deal with the boss or uh, the figurehead who says, you know, if you really want this reward, that's essentially what it boils down to, reward. If you want these rewards, you have to do this. So for a Libra Ascendant, it is often very important that they learn how to play the game of life because that is what allows them to have their consistent rewards, their consistent gains as given by the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we think about the sun and that it is debilitated, in the first house so this is this is very yeah. very interesting so the sun is debilitated in the first house for libra sun the 11th house lord debilitated in the first what does that tell you about uh, uh libra and um well i guess they're <laughs> how gains come to them or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think there's a few things that are important. One is, um, this is, it kind of indicates it's going to be maybe a more difficult planet for a Libra Senate to work with because in that natural first house, you know, natural where I arrive, where I see the, my life path coming from, you know, the perspective that I see the world starting and where I'm going to go to, the sun is debilitated. So it indicates, you know, it's not going to be the easiest planet to work with for a Libra. Um, and I think it highlights, um, you know, right back the very first class we ever did together, we spent the whole class on the signs, on the Razis. Mm -hmm. And we went around and uh, we had a, a little phrase for each of the different signs. And, you know, some of them are quite complex about the type of landscape and the different elements that make it up. And in Libra, it just goes, in Libra trade, you know, so... <laughs> Like you've got the name of the sign and then you've got, you know, a noun, trade or verb, you know, it's both, I suppose. Um, and this is what highlights, you can see why this highlights, again, this idea that partnerships and trade are so important. The exchange is really important because when Libra is doing gains motivated 
but just by the self from the first house from me and I and what I want right. this this sun is not powerful this sun is not going to be um consistent it's not going to be telling the truth and giving that vision and inspiration it's going to you know be at its weakest and yet when we use the sun as a libra ascendant if you're a libra ascendant you're using the sun to to trade with others to make gains with others to exchange with others for the benefit of this larger network and community of people that all benefit from trade then the sun can give and give and give and produce results so right. um often we see this don't we as we go through each ascendant that something that is quintessential about what we think about in this right. case about libra that it's about trade is here highlighted by the sun the brightest of those planets it's going to work really well if you're if you've got your gains that uh wealth generation that's beyond the day-to-day -day, invested with others invested in that exchange right it's going to work well right yeah i mean the fact that the sun is exalted in the seventh house i mean that is it's just really telling because the sun is our inspiration. The sun is our inner guidance. The sun um, is, as you mentioned, where we shine in the world. And, you know, Libra is sign seven. Uh, and so there's, there's this uh, confluence there towards making what you do, what you're interested in, what your gains are, what your leadership is, what your inspiration is, making it a benefit to um, a much larger society uh, a, a much larger group of human beings, that is one of the keys with, with a Libra ascendant. And that's often why, you know, when we think about the fact that this 11th Lord's son is debilitated in the first, when we, we sometimes come across Libra ascendants who are very successful outwardly, but they always come to some kind of fall or some kind of tragedy. It's usually because they have tried to drive their own personal needs, personal inspirations simply for the sake of their own um, self-aggrandizement. Mm. Uh, so, you know, Libras, as we can see here with this sun and its rulership, and its debilitation and exaltation positions, it really is meant to be uh, a sign for others, a, a sign for the people. And that, that doesn't mean, you know, I don't want to say that one has to sacrifice everything for everybody else, but you know, what one is doing needs to be such that it is tied into uh, a greater whole, a greater society, something much larger than oneself. So um, the, the sun really needs to be considered for a Libra ascendant um, to see, well, how well are they manifesting their inspiration, which, as we can see, is clear when we look at its debilitation in the first and exaltation in the seventh. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And and this is, this is, we're going to muddy the waters with another planet here, but there's a beautiful exchange, isn't there, with Saturn as well, mm -hmm. because Saturn's doing the opposite. And we spoke about this in a previous video, so we're not going to recap that. But I think that this also guides how to use the sun is uh, that, you know, you take that leadership, that inspiration, and that's for others. And then the, the Saturn, the, um, the austerity and the discipline is for the self. You know, that's where that's going to flourish. So when both of those are working really well, there's a great balance because right. we're Saturn and the sun on the one seven um, axis. Yeah. Yes. So. And I'm glad you brought that back up because again, you know, one of the, one of the beautiful things about this whole process of looking at the plants per ascendant is you know, when you really go through all of the plants for each ascendant, it unlocks how the ascendant is, is meant to function. It's not just, Oh, I read in a book, you know, the Libra is this way. Uh, yeah. We start to see that Libra is considered to be a certain way because of how the house lords uh, are aligned from the Libra ascendant. You know, every ascendant is going to be that way. So this is very important. Um, I feel this is a very important uh, bit of information to study, <laughs> to understand the ascendants well. So uh, before we finish up with the sun, do you have any other insights or any other thoughts, or do you think we've covered as much as we need to for today? Well, maybe just a question um, that we haven't touched on there with the sun. I don't know that I've got anything to contribute, but a question around um, authority figures, because the sun is also that. So working with others, being a leader, being an underling, what's your take on where Libra is best in that hierarchy of running its own business or being its servant? Where is it? Right. Well, Libra is a, is a complicated sign in that regard because, you know, some of them are, are fairly obvious. Like, for example, when we look at um, a Virgo ascendant, you know, we have 
Mercury ruling the first house and the 10th house. So that naturally inclines a Virgo ascendant to be, you know, someone who runs their own business or, um, you know, is essentially can be in charge of their own time a little bit more than others. Um, but here we have Libra, which is very other people oriented. Um, we have Libra, which is meant to care for and nurture and inspire others. But then we have Saturn exalted in the first and, and Sun debilitated in the first and you know, the opposite with those two planets. And the way I've always looked at um, Libra Ascendant is that they really need to be what I would consider to be like a, like a Leo, uh, like a servant king. Mm. It, it, like yeah. that ideal, like the ideal politician that we would want, that ideal Kshatriya that we would want, mm. which would be someone who gets involved in service and takes on the responsibility so that, well, it, it's not for oneself. You know, it, it's not that one becomes a king for oneself. And, uh, you know, I, I like a lot of, uh, uh, what do they call it, historical fiction. And uh, there's a, a great series of books called The Last Kingdom. There's actually a series on YouTube that they, not YouTube, excuse me, Netflix, that they turn into a, um, uh, a video series. And the king in, the, the king in, that, video, in that series is, there's a lot not to like about him. I mean, he's got some annoying traits and things that are just ridiculous. But throughout the whole theme of his character, this was done in, say, the 900s, uh, maybe the yeah, 900s uh, AD. And his vision was to have a united England. Mm -hmm. And so he became king and his vision was to have a united England. It wasn't to have servants flocking to them and it wasn't for him to have power like all the other stupid politicians around him wanted he had this vision of, of, of uniting England for the good of all. And so for a, um, a Libra ascendant, a healthy Libra ascendant, they take on these tasks and they use that austerity and strength of Saturn and they may answer to a higher power, whatever that, whoever that might be, um, but it is for the good of all. So, you know, Libra is, Libra can make a wonderful servant, someone who can really get the job done well, but they have to be inspired in that regard. They have to have uh, leadership that is worth following. And that's where we see the sun exalted in the seventh house. Uh, if a Libra son does not have leadership worth following, then they will tend to mm, make more trouble. Uh, they will tend to not be as uh, clear in what their goals are. So the key with Libra Ascendant is to, to either answer to a higher power or to have some kind of um, uh, authority worth following to help inspire them and keep them on track. That is fantastic. Thank you, Ryan. That really helped put that in my, yep, Good. that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Okay. Well, excellent. So we'll go ahead and we'll conclude here for uh, Libra Ascendants. And we've gone through all of the plans now, correct? Yes. Correct. Yeah. So we've done all the plans for Libra Ascendants. So if you need to review those, Again, you can go back through this channel, youtube.com slash uh, Ryan's Vedic Astrology. And if you want, you can go to the little search, uh, our spyglass or whatever that's called, and type in Libra, and it should pull up all the videos uh, for this Ascendant so far. So uh, next up, you're going to be hanging around. We're going to be doing uh, Scorpio, correct? Yes, I am. Looking but you're not a Scorpio Ascendant, are you? <laughs> No. Okay. Well, who, who knows? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're all, we're all, we're all channeling these energies, right? Yeah, that's true. That's let's, true. Let's, 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 let's get into Scorpio energy next. Yes. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll put a, we'll put a pin in it there, as some people say, and we'll pick up with Scorpio Senate. So thanks again for being here.